Hello and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, welcome back to the car, welcome back to Cornwall and welcome back to very late spring. Everything is coming out in the hedgerows, blooming and blossoming and it is, it's a fun old time if you happen to be Mother Nature. However, however, we're back in the car. We did three vlogs. We did two as we were walking over the towns. I had to put a dead cat on a lav mic to cut out wind noise, which worked quite well. In fact, I was, I was very impressed by that. Um, then we did a vlog in the living room with a new stream camera and the stream camera worked quite well. I mean, it didn't help that I just put some water in my hair to try and make it less wild, I guess, less unruly. And in the thumbnail, I just look like a disappointed librarian um, that you are visiting with an overdue library book. I'm just like, oh, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. But that's the thing about vlogs you quite quickly when you're doing a YouTube channel get used to the sound of your own voice. And the sound of your own voice is not the same as you hear it inside your own head, inside your skull. It is, in fact, what everyone else hears. But that's the thing. Everyone else hears you as you and sees you as you. But you never see you as you, question mark. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, we are, we are gonna go across. Thanks, buddy. Um, just trying to work out who had right of way on the crossroads. Uh, apparently we did, so that's lovely. Um, yeah, you don't get used to seeing you, especially on camera, because the way you see you is in a mirror. So you're always reversed. In your mind's eye, the image of you is always flipped on itself. But when you use a camera, um, you get to see you from all different angles and sometimes, well, it takes a while to get used to looking at that. Also, looking at you on a wide angle camera is uh, very different from looking at you on, say, a telephoto lens. So wide angle telephoto, something, the difference between, say, an 18 millimeter and a 135 millimeter lens. A wide angle camera does not make for a flattering look, but it is what a lot of webcams shoot in. So yeah, um, last week's vlog, I mean, it, it is me and it is how other people see me, but I was just like, nah, maybe I shouldn't have done that to my hair. So I think I'll just embrace the wild look, just embrace the I have no fashion look, which I've embraced since I was in school, I guess. But it is lovely to be back in the car. It is absolutely lovely to be back in the car. Um, we were, so what were we doing? Oh yeah, just, just a quick aside. The windshield. The windshield got a bolt to it on the A30. So the A30 hail bypass, which is apparently notorious around these parts for breaking windshields. Um, it's like a metal bolt hit just, just where the dashboard is. Uh, made a crack that went up and then the crack bent and then started running across the bottom of the windshield. The thing about that is, I believe the area right in front of the driver is toughened, is hardened. So if you do get a crack that ventures into the driver's uh, vision, what usually happens is the crack will bend away or, or sort of move out of your line of vision so that you can still see in the event the windshield takes a hit. So that was fun. Uh, took the car to Victoria, had to take the day off, drove up there 40 miles there through uh, a lot of roadworks, extensive roadworks. And well, here's the thing about Victoria. There's bugger all in it. They built the, uh, they built the A30 bypass around the town and there is no reason for the town to exist anymore. So there's, there's nothing there. There's a, an industrial estate there's a lot of trucks that go in into and out of the industrial estate. There's a travel lodge and there's an inn and the inn looks pretty deserted as did the travel lodge. Um, yeah, so I spent maybe, I think it was about an hour, hour and a half there. Um, yeah, jumped in the car. The problem was that this car has a lot of driver assists. So a lot of things that read things like road signs and um, automatic wipers and detect uh, light levels. So that if it gets dark, the headlights automatically come on. If it gets wet, the windshield wipers automatically come on. If we pass a road sign with a speed limit on it, it pops the speed limit on the dashboard so that we know um, how fast or slow that we are meant to be going. And that's very important 
in places like the city. This is famously not a city. This is the countryside, but we still got road signs. And as we go past, it picks it up and it puts the road sign on my dashboard. If you were in a city and there's a speed camera and you're like, I don't know the speed, it'll appear on your dashboard so you can adjust speed accordingly. But with this car, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything if you go too fast or too slow. Uh, it doesn't bing or beep or do anything with the accelerator. It will just make the sign red, but we're kind of dancing around the point. The point is that one of the reasons you, you put the car in for uh, getting the windshield replaced at a center rather than a dude coming out and doing it in the car park is that um, it has lane departure assist, LDA. So over 32 miles an hour, the car will read the sides of the road, like the white line, the dotted white lines, and if you stray across those white lines, it goes bip 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 beep, and the steering wheel tenses up like a little force feedback, won't stop you going across them, but you get driver assist, which now doesn't work. So the whole reason for going into Victoria for taking a day off, um, yeah, so I drove back through a rainstorm. It was absolutely hammering down and uh, I got very close to home and I was like, hmm, something doesn't, something's not quite right here. So I, I just drove her over the, the median, the, the white line, and um, yeah, she didn't beep or bep or anything. I brought up the diagnostics on the dashboard. Apparently it is detecting the, the lane, but it's not doing anything with that information. So I think what I'm gonna do is just leave, uh, leave it until the car next gets serviced and get Toyota to fix it. They probably just need to turn it on or connect something, I don't know. There's, there's something that's not quite right. But otherwise the car functions, crash, uh, collision detection works, adaptive cruise control works, everything works except it just doesn't beep or bep if you depart a lane, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, uh, yes, what did we do yesterday? And I say we, because uh, it would have been on... Oh yeah, it was a watch party. There was a watch party and we were watching the Eurovision Song Contest, which is uh, something that happens every year and that was over on James's Discord. So we all went on to James's Discord, um, started a watch party with the Eurovi Eurovision Song Contest. And honestly, okay, we're gonna be careful here because I can't see. There we go, good. Um, yeah, so we were watching the Eurovision Song Contest and you might say, well, why do you do that, old chum? Because it's fun. Uh, you've got, what, 24 acts? 24, um, 20, is it 24 or 28? I can't remember. And then everyone's just like, Ooh, we're going to do a little bit of a song. There were a lot of ballads this year, a lot of, a lot of very slow songs this year, uh, which was interesting. I thought Germany was quite good with their, uh, with their entry. Uh, Estonia was very good this year. Um, France. I do like the French entry this year. Um, very Edith Piaf. Well, I suppose anyone singing in French is very Edith Piaf, but I, yeah, I really did enjoy it. So that was a fun old evening. Uh, went to bed quite late because well, we ended up on Siege, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, playing a little bit of customs with some of Alex's friends, uh, some of my brother's friends. Um, yeah, and then ended up waking up today very late. Well, normal time, put all the cameras on to charge and then went back to bed, <laughs> gonna be honest. But it did give, because everyone was there, it did give us a chance to, uh, or give me the chance to broach the question hey guys if uh, if we decided to do cybernet again which we haven't done for a very long time uh, cybernet is basically it's d20 modern so it's kind of like dungeons and dragons i guess uh, if we were to do cybernet again would you guys want to play would you guys want to do it on stream uh, on like twitch i think the answer is do I get a 50 caliber sniper rifle? And I'm like, buddy, you get whatever you want. So yeah, I think everyone's quite happy to do 
uh, a little bit of cybernet, which is lovely. Uh, where do we want to go? I'm going to go this way. I'm going to see what's going on. Uh, let me just go get out of everyone's way. Good. So yeah, uh, Cybernet. It's, it uses D20 modern rules. It's a tabletop game. Dice, paper, um, character sheets. Uh, but instead of rogues and sorcerers, you get hackers and fixers and mercenaries. Um, but yeah, I've been watching Jacob Burgess do uh, play Not A Drop To Drink, which is based in um, White Wolf's Vampire The Masquerade. And he, in fact, writes for, um, writes for the Dark World, which is what all of that is set in. The interesting thing is that they don't use battle maps at all. So there's no battle maps. And one of the big problems I was finding with running Dungeons and Dragons once a week was that I was having to make, uh, make a lot of maps. There was a, it was a very map heavy thing. And towards the end, I got Photoshop involved because it was just easier for me to uh, move tokens and counters around things like Photoshop. And it got detailed, it got interesting, but I felt that a lot of the story, a lot of the storytelling was being lost behind a bunch of rules and maps. And honestly, it's a lot easier if you can just be like, hey, it was a dark and rainy night and you guys were soaked to the skin. And it's just, it's just so much easier, so much more off the cuff, uh, less rigid. And the nice thing is because Cybernet is a lot of house rules because the main rule set is kind of broken. Um, what, what you end up with is just a bunch of people and they're just like, I want to get through the store. Right, I'm going to deploy a 50 cal sniper rifle. And it's like, you could, you could just wait for somebody to go through the door and say, please hold the door. No, 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 we're going to shoot the lock off with a 50 cal sniper rifle. It's like, huh. And that is actually something they did once. They, they gen that was something they genuinely did. Got a critical one, uh, got a crit critical role and managed to shoot one of the other player characters in the spine. That was, yeah, that was an interesting time. So I think recapturing the more fluid and just more chaotic, because those guys, those guys are little chaos demons. Really, uh, the people, uh, that's, that's James, Chantel, uh, Nick and Alex, they are definitely little chaos demons when it comes to things like Cybernet, which when it comes to Dungeons and Dragons, it's a little bit more, I don't know, D&D just seems to be a lot more rules and rule books. So I will give that more thought because trying to do something on uh, Twitch, so be on Twitch definitely, and then trying to then put it onto, say, uh, YouTube afterwards. I mean, that's the easy bit. You just push record and then probably pop, pop it into Premiere and do intro and outro plates and just, if anything does happen, like we go and take a break, just take the breaks out. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm gonna need another Stream Deck. And unfortunately, the Stream Deck's really expensive. Like, as a piece of technology, it gives you a bunch of extra buttons that aren't on your keyboard, because keyboard buttons, they can do things. Your keyboard can accidentally stop a recording or mess up a stream or whatever. Um, but if you, if you have a Stream Deck, you can assign buttons to the Stream Deck uh, that only do one thing, and that is, you know, uh, change scenes or start the stream or start the YouTube recording. Um, so I'm gonna have to look into that, see if there's any cheap ones on, well, I know there aren't any cheap ones on eBay because I looked. So, yes, uh, Eurovision, we watched that. It was, it was a fun old time. It's also a fun time watching all the acts get increasingly drunk over the course of an evening. Um, shout out to the lady who was churning butter uh, behind one of the presenters at, at one point in the evening. If you watch Eurovision, you'll know what I meant. I can't remember if it was the, the Italian uh, crew that had the butter churning lady. I can't remember. Um, yeah, Cybernet is definitely something we are going to be looking at. Again, it's, it's an awful lot of work. Like, it's an awful lot of work on the night to make that happen. 
uh, and it's something I'd like to do but let me think about it definitely let me think about it and the car is back and mostly works M mostly like it it gets us from A to B and it's still probably one of the best vehicles I could have transitioned from a motorbike to so yeah in order to get me off a motorbike whatever car I had had to be very special and I think this car is very special which is nice um, thank you once again for everyone who has in fact uh, been watching the channel um, we've been putting out little hope if you're watching these videos as they come out so little hope which is another super massive uh, super massive horror game uh, which has been it's been an interesting time I think I accidentally slated hard mode so uh, we're not playing on normal we're playing on hard for that but uh, if you wanted to watch a film on the channel the supermassive games, supermassive horror games, are definitely uh, one to watch out for. Currently they are on the front page of the channel in their own little playlists, so you can find them quite easily. Uh, we've done Man of Dan, we've done The Quarry. I love The Quarry. I really, really love The Quarry. And uh, we're currently doing uh, Little Hope, which is good. Um, everything else? Yeah, God of War's been going on quite nicely. So a lot of... I mean, it's a... It's a it's a biff them up. You get to you get to fight things, but but there's a lot of story. And if you're into your Norse mythology, it's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of Norse mythology in there, and it looks it's a beautiful looking game. So that's been good. And uh, Stranded Deep, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of getting to the end of the bosses. Uh, I think we're we're going to be doing the giant eel in the next play uh, in the next session. So. That's one to look out for. If you, uh, if you uh, have been uh, donating at all to the channel using the coffee link, uh, thank you, because I did use some of that to get the stream camera, which is something I would need if we were going to be doing, uh, if we're ending up doing Cybernet. Sorry, the junction's a little bit busy. Um, so that's been that's been nice to be able to do that and not worry about it um, but as ever if you have a recurring subscription on coffee then uh, always keep an eye on it make sure you can definitely afford it I mean you first always you first um, if you don't know what coffee is it's kind of like patreon but you can just do a single a single donation like I think the default is like three dollars um, but if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. If you can't do it, again, fine. Uh, your views, your views matter. And your comments. I do, I do like it when you guys comment on videos. It is, uh, it is a fun old time. It, it allows me to interact with you in a safe environment uh, for everyone, which is good. Uh, likes obviously help videos. I mean, if you didn't know what likes do, they help videos. They help them um, in their video rankings on the tube. Comments do that as well, apparently. So that's fun. And if you have subscribed, if you want notifications, you can dingle the bingle. But I have noticed that the subscription system is slightly different because when you subscribe, you get a drop down now. You get a drop down that says, I want partial notifications. I want full notifications and I want no notifications so you can be subscribed to a channel and never hear a word or a peep from it which is I mean it's fine if you're one of those people who has a friend group on whatsapp and they're constantly pinging each other and your phone's constantly going off maybe you don't want notifications that we've put up a sweet sweet ass video on the tube but anyway, um, yeah, we're back in hail. So I'm going to leave it there for the time being. If you like, definitely leave a little like, leave a subscribe, as we've been discussing. Um, yeah, and I'll tell you what, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>